Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday evening devotions. Before we start, let's just start with a word of prayer. Gracious Lord Jesus, you in every situation. You see us, you smell us, you hear us, you love us, you touch us, Lord. Thank you for that. Thank you that you are with us and that you know every hair on our head. Thank you that we can turn to you in every situation. But right now we bring ourselves to you and we say, Lord, we are your servants. Help us to do what you want. Help us to be your disciples in the world with all those we reach. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. It was over 40 years ago when Bill and I went to Paris. And one of my best memories, not Paris, but the ladies in Paris, they were stunning. Beauty took on a new meaning. They were so well-groomed. They were not dressed comfortably like us tourists were. And remember, that's 40 years ago. Their makeup was perfection. And as you walked past them, there was this, you sort of, turn to see who was coming close because they smelled so good, but it wasn't an overpowering smell. It was a very genteel but gorgeous smell that they had. Somehow they just epitomized everything that the fashion world in France, in my eyes, was all about style and beauty. And that made me wonder what my perfume was like to passers-by. I don't use the most expensive brands of perfume that they use. But, you know, some perfumes last longer, some are sweeter, some it, each perfume is different. So what aroma do I emit? What wafts for me as I walk by? And we all know that in summer you will, <laughs> and no, that's not a very pleasant smell you're smelling. But it's not just the smell, it's the aroma. And then my thoughts took another turn. I wonder how I smell. Not really the perfumed smell, but what aroma do my actions leave in the lives of people that I come across? Those that I contact. What do others think of me when I walk past them? Am I patient? Am I kind? Am I always focused on them or focused on myself? Do, do I leave a pleasant, happy perfume when I walk by? Or am I only focused on my own agenda, self-centered, impatient, demanding or uncaring? To be honest, the latter scenario is often the reality. But I do want that to be that sweet aroma to my family, to my friends, to my neighbors, and the people I come in contact with. I want to leave that pleasant aroma of those in casual encounters with them, with anyone I come in contact with. And they must sense me after they've left, a good sense. Wow, it was good to speak to her, not, wow, may I never see her again. I want the aroma, the sweet aroma of the knowledge of Christ in every place I go and with every footstep I take. And how about you? Do we pound the streets in our own indignation, or do we gently step into the lives of others? I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 to 16. And 2 Corinthians 2, 14 to 16 says, But thanks be to God, for in union with Christ we are always led by God, as prisoners in Christ's victory procession. God uses us to make the knowledge about Christ spread everywhere like a sweet fragrance. For we are like sweet-smelling incense offered by Christ to God, which spreads among those who are being saved and those who are being lost. For those who are being lost, it is a deadly stench that kills. But for those who have been saved, it is a fragrance that brings life. Who then is capable of such a task? 
We are not like so many others who handle God's message as if it were cheap merchandise. But because God has sent us, we speak with sincerity in his presence as servants of God. And yes, as it said, we are not adequate for these things. But we are the fragrance of Christ to God, and not only to God, but to those who are being saved and those who are perishing. I grew up in Bloemfontein, and we had many, many fruit trees. And the most beautiful time was when those trees started sprouting, the fruit trees. The buds, they were beautiful, and there was always that gentle perfume in the air, beautiful to see. And each species, if you went close, had a slightly different smell to the other one. And as the flowers buds stopped dropping, the um, peach or the apple or whatever blossomed would turn into a bud. And as each bud died, a new fruit has actually grown. And so the season started over and over again each year. And so we are to perpetuate our beauty and our aroma so that more fruit can be grown to draw more and more to Christ so that none perish. Psalm 45 is also a royal wedding song. I'm not going to read the whole one, but it is a messianic psalm which speaks of the coming of Christ. And as you read it, you will see Christ in it. But let me read verse 7. Verse 7 says, The kingdom that God has given you will last forever and ever. You rule over your people with justice. You love what is right and hate what is evil. That is why God, your God, has chosen you and has poured out more happiness on you than on any other king. The perfume of myrrh and aloes is on your clothes. Musicians entertain you in palaces decorated with ivy. God has chosen each one of us. And as verse 8 says, the perfume of myrrh and aloes is on our clothes, on your clothes. And that made me wonder, what does myrrh actually smell like? We hear of it when Christ is born, but what does it actually smell like? So I googled it. Dr. Google says, raw myrrh is cleaned of impurities, are we not cleansed of impurities by being blush, washed by the blood of Christ? It is then distilled to extract the essential oil. And this oil, which is rich in sequitinepines, and that is just something that's needed in perfumes, gives myrrh its unique fragrance. We are rich in God's love. And we are given our own unique fragrance in Christ. And in perfumery, myrrh oil is used as a fixative to prolong the life of other scents in perfumes. It can also be used to give body and depth to a fragrance. And we, each of us, are also needed by Christ to bring his perfume to the world. Psalm 45 verse 8 tells us that we, each of us, carry the perfume of myrrh and aloes on our clothes if we are sons and daughters of the Most High. We carry his rich and sumptuous fragrance, which, as Dr. Google says, gives us a sense of mystery and sophistication. Well, it sounds so elaborate and amazing, but that is the perfume that God has poured on us via Christ to share with those that we come in contact with. So how do we do that? How do we share our perfume with those we come in contact with? Well, in verse 11 of Psalm 45, it answers our question very simply. It says, your beauty will make the king desire you. He is your master, so you must obey him. The psalmist tells that the king's bride, that the king desires her beauty. Christ desires our beauty. The King of Kings, the Lord of 
Lord, Lord Jesus looks upon his bride, us, the church, as beautiful. By saving Christians, he has removed the ugliness of sin and made them beautiful. We, as the church of Christ, the bride of Christ, need to walk the streets, not only in Paris, but wherever we go, showing our beauty, his beauty, and wafting his perfume to the world. And in closing, what does verse 7 and 8 say? It says, God has given us and has poured out more happiness on us than any other king. The perfume of myrrh and aloes is on our clothes. How can we be selfish and not share our God-given perfume with all that we come in contact with? Just walk past someone in love and let them smell your aroma instead of pounding the streets and letting everyone know what a bad mood you're in. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, it sounds so easy. And life was never easy, not for you either. But you did what God wanted you to do, your Father. He needed you to go to the cross and you obeyed him. And just so we need to pick up our cross and follow you. Let your perfume waft through the world as we walk through the world. Let us share just a little bit of your compassion your love, your gentleness, your kindness, your understanding, the list goes on because that's who you are and you've given it to us. Help us share it with the world, with those we come in contact with, not only those we love or like even. Thank you, Lord, that you understand, but you do not negate on your objectives for us. It might be challenging but you've given us the power, your authority. What more could we ask for? We ask us in your precious name. Amen.